Good morning. You know, there's something very beautiful about a quiet church full of people. You know, this is one of the beauties of a space like this. And we're very sad that we're unable to open it for private prayer during the, during the week outside of services, but we're working on it. Hopefully, uh, next month we'll be able to, uh, to get that far. Um, just for people who are new or have forgotten, we are we do live stream this service, but the camera is only trained on me, so very boring for the people watching. But um, but safe for you guys, you're, you're, you're not seeing. When we come to do the congregational parts of the service, obviously the uh, that that is involved. In the order of service, we all say together. But people who are doing specific pieces, like the readings, we're just going to just stand in place to do those and to pray. So sometimes that makes it difficult for some people to hear. So I was talking about that with some people, and what I feel about that is if somebody is reading scripture. We can't quite get every word that they're saying. If we just let go and let the words of the passage simply flow over us, then our conscious mind that's desperately trying to grab each of those words has to get out of the way. And let our whole being absorb what? is being said. So, see it as a gift. If you can't quite catch every word that the person reading is reading. I didn't know I was going to say that. Well, there we go. Um, I know it's time for another parish newsletter, so I will just give you some heads up of some things that are going on. First of all, who's heard of the season of creation? Those things that are very dear to our hearts, 
as churchgoers, as worshippers, as Anglicans. So I thank whoever it was, but unfortunately we can't share food yet. Which leads me to flowers. Flowers in the church. I'm wondering if there is somebody who would like to organise that each week there is a bunch of flowers like when we come in or on the back. Doesn't mean you have to bring them every week, but who would be willing, I'm wondering, to organise that there is a bunch of flowers each week? So I'm not going to put you on a spot right now, so would you just email me or write a message in the comments below if you're online um, to who would be willing to organise, organise that there are flowers each week. Doesn't mean you have to bring them each week. Um, we will also be talking about, the, in the same vein, the churchyard, um, the council, as you've noticed, have decided in their wisdom that they are not going to blow uh, closed churchyards. Uh, so we'll be discussing that in the future, but we, we still want to take care of it. We want ecosystems to, to, to develop. So, but it, you know, if you have a wild garden, it still needs tending. And that also is, we need to, to take care of St. Peter's Road and, and the, the priest's store at the back here. All needs leading um, and just showing people who walk by that we really care about our church. Um, which brings us to the hall. The hall is very exciting. We're really going to say in two sentences what, what we're doing in the hall. Would you mind? Turn up here. We've managed to secure some funding to refurbish the kitchen um, in, the, um, in the church hall. And the, the plan is to, uh, to have um, a local pantry uh, where people can um, join a club where they save money each week and they can shop each week for discounted goods. And we will also be launching a community cafe where people can come along and have a coffee um, and uh, a scone at night too. So there's some of the things we're going to do. And we'll also be using the space for Messy Church. More than two sentences. <laughs> Thank you. So this really is exciting for us. Um, when the priest all left, there was a bit of a struggle, uh, a bit of negativity in the community, and all of that negativity, everyone I've spoken to is very supportive of what we're doing and want to help. So that's the whole thing. We've got volunteers that came out of um, what appeared to be some sort of pushback on the fact that the preschool had left the hall. Uh, so that brings us to Coffee Morning. Somebody wrote on the Facebook page, when are your Coffee Morning starting? So we just we need to do a risk assessment in the hall, we need to wait until all the work is done in the hall, but as soon as it is, um, we will be able to start uh, coffee mornings again. So Barry, we want to give a heads up to your mum, that if she's interested in doing that, brilliant. Um, and you know, this, we have to do risk assessments left, right and centre. I said to somebody yesterday, if I see another piece of paperwork, I'm going to go stir crazy. Scream at somebody. Um, and it, it, so, worship is a lot of work for us now. Um, it, it's a lot more work than it was before, uh, and so we have to think about a lot more. So, uh, I'm thinking right now about Christmas. I'd like us to get our thinking caps on about how we can celebrate Christmas for the community. We will not be able to have the crowds of people coming into church as we normally do. So we need to think outside the box. So get thinking, no idea is two way out, right? I'm thinking things like, you know, walks around the um, parades around the streets of Kirkley, you know, deciding to do an Easter with a donkey, you know, things like that. You know, we have Mary on a donkey walking around the streets of, uh, walking around the streets of Kirkley. Um, so, you know, just think outside the box. It's going to be amazing. We can all, this is a great opportunity for mission to bring people to us. Um, there, 
there's a, a man came around yesterday to the, to the rectory and he's asked me a question. His name is Phil Hopkins. The question is, if you could ask any question about faith, religion, God, question, any question at all, what question would you ask? If he's inviting people to actually send those into him, there's a link on the web page. Um, I think that would be a great question for us, isn't it? Perhaps we'll have some study groups that get together and let's explore questions that we have. And just like everyone else, the time of the pandemic, the lockdown, has caused us to be a lot, a lot shorter of money than we would like to have been. I want to thank everyone who is, we are all you know, giving of our time, talent and treasure, and I thank you. But that's another place for our creative hats. We wanted to raise 20,000 for, 22,000 in fact for this window, there was going to be a big slash once it was back in, and of course we were locked down. So we need some creative thinking about how we, uh, how we raise a lot of money. We are a heavily subsidised parish, and um, we, need to, uh, we need to put some more money in the coffers to keep us going. So creative thinking, people, creative thinking. You know, who do you know in the financial world who's got wild ideas about how we get people to invest tens of thousands of pounds um, and, uh, in a meaningful way? So it's all about creativity, creativity. God is about creativity. I think it's Richard Orr, I can't remember the exact quote now, but it says we uh, it, it says basically we put Jesus in a box. We've shaped him in, in a service. Uh, we argue about how we should do that. And we've forgotten that what, what, what Jesus, what God showed us through Jesus is the worshiping community is about transformation. We are about transformation. So, my apologies for going on for so long. We don't get, often get a chance to sort of share what it is that's happening and, uh, and be together. So we can't do it really socially, but uh, I can not choose to talk with you. Let us quiet our hearts and minds as we prepare to worship God. Stand the fear of your own. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires grow, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts. By the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord God, our Maker and our Redeemer, this is your world and we are your people. Come among us and save us. When we have willfully misused your gifts of creation, Lord, be merciful. Forgive us our sins. When we 
we have seen your treatment of others and have not gone to their aid, Lord, be merciful. When we have condoned evil and dishonesty and failed to strive for justice, Lord, be merciful. When we have heard the good news of Christ but have failed to share it with others, Lord, be merciful. When we have not loved you with our, all our hearts, nor our neighbours as ourselves, Lord, be merciful. Forgive us. And may the God of love and power forgive you and free you from your sins, heal and strengthen you by the Holy Spirit, and raise you to new life. In Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of God, Lord God. Land of you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High. Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen.
by our claim, did God reject his people? By no means. I am an Israelite myself, a descendant of Abraham, from the tribe of Benjamin. God did not reject his people, for whom he will do. Do you know what scriptures say in the passage of Abraham and Isaac? How he appealed to God against his name. For God's gifts and his call are immovable. Just as you were at one time displeased with God, have now received mercy as a result of that displeasure. So they know how he became disobedient in order that they too may now receive mercy as a result of God's mercy to you. For God has found every one of them to disobey you, so that you may have no mercy on them all. Let us stand for the gospel.
He wasn't from Israel. Jesus is him. As he said, to save the people of Israel. So if you did what Jesus did, if you turned around and you, 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 you say to this foreigner who was not like you, not from where you were from, who was different than you, you turn around and call him a dog. So, what is going on here? This is early in Jesus' ministry. You know, we are told that God came to us in Jesus. God is Jesus, Jesus is God in human form. Jesus came to be among us as God among us. But if he was truly human, then he couldn't have been perfect, could he? Now we've seen how God learns through fire. At the end of the flood, God said, I promise I will never do that again. I will never destroy the people of earth. That is my new covenant that I have with you. And so I think what we see in Jesus is Jesus learning too. Remember last week, I think I mentioned that we don't stop learning when we die. We die when we stop learning. We probably wouldn't be following Jesus today if Jesus is all that he went about was calling foreigners dogs and picking fig trees when it didn't yield fruits when he wanted it. Jesus learns. Jesus came to show us to be in the world as agents of transformation, and that transformation begins with us. I want to give you a little shack. Recommend it, the shack. If you want to experience through that story what it is when we talk about the unconditional, completely self-giving love of God, read the shack. And there's also another book called The Shack Revisited, which is a sort of theological reflection of the Shack. And in, and in The Shack Revisited, the man who wrote it, who's some telling, the name's completely gone. He's a, he's a sort of well known theologian, um, but not that well known, obviously. Um, he, uh, he talks about Jesus did not come to be a model of the things we should do. Following Jesus does not mean doing what we think Jesus did or would do. I mean, how many people have been told if you behave in a more Christian-like manner, a more Christ-like manner? Because all people have got views about if you're a Christian, if you follow Jesus, this is what you do. This is how you behave, right? But in the Shack Revisited, the author talks about Jesus came to show us how to be. You see that story? Who knows? He was probably hungry. He was probably thirsty. No doubt a hot day. Perhaps his disciples have been giving him grief. And there's this woman who keeps badgering him, but she's not in his market market group. And he lashes at her. Somewhat unfortunate. But she's having none of it. She calls him that night, and even the dogs eat the crumbs under the table. And what does Jesus do? How is Jesus being? Compassionate. Letting go of his ego. He didn't have to hold on to the fact 
but they were in concerts at golf a few years ago. He, could, he was humble enough to see his wrongdoing, to see her faith, and grant her her wish. Jesus showing us how to be. You know what they say? All saints have a past, all sinners have a future. No one is perfect, and not even Jesus. So next time we're in a difficult situation, let's not think about what would Jesus do. Let's think about how would Jesus be? A learner, humble, willing to be badgered by other people to do the right thing. So I think when we open our top of the back of the church, our Christian bookstore, we're going to have bracelets that say HWJB. How Jesus be? What do you think? Big amen? stand and proclaim our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father of the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, the eternally begotten Father, God from God, light from light, true God and true God, begotten from God to God, of one being with the Father, through him all things are made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made to man. For our Saviour he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of God, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who in the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge our baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection and the life of the world to come. Amen. Amen. And we stand and we'll sit for the prayer.
your love for us and your belief in us. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God of mercy and grace, the society we live in is messy too. Death and destruction caused by a basic lack of care for human life. Education exam systems disrupted by a pandemic and now in crisis. Recall us, Lord, to fundamental values, to the love of God and love of neighbour. Remind us that in quietness and in trust shall be our strength, not in noisy, assertive demands. Draw us into a deeper unity of purpose across our troubled social landscape. We pray in particular for the people of Beirut, that their suffering will soon end and solutions be found. And for all young people who recently received disappointing exam results, that they will be able to find opportunities to make their dreams for the future come true. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of mercy and grace, our world is in suffering. The threats to human flourishing multiply with the misery of refugees, the warnings of climate catastrophe as well. Help us, Lord, to hold out a clearer vision of a world living in conformity with the values of your kingdom, and which offer humans dignity, equal worth, and the enjoyment of political and cultural diversity. Keep offering us this vision, together with politicians who will work for it and institutions that embody it. We pray for refugees fearing war, political conflict or religious persecution, who put their lives at risk when crossing the English Channel in attempts to find a better life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. God of mercy and grace, we recognise that the mess of our world starts in the maze of the human heart, our heart, and we alone are responsible for what happens there. Give us grace to clean out the dark corners and restore a sense of order and purpose. We know that this side of death we will always live with a degree of mess, but we ask for your continuing blessing that we attempt to love both our neighbours and ourselves despite the problems. Bless us as we offer you now the week ahead. And as Jesus said, everything is possible for one who believes. Merciful Father, accept the Jesus for the sake of your As you know, um, we had to do things a little differently to keep everyone safe. 
I don't have a server because that would be um, too close proximity to the uh, the stack, as I call it, the Holy Hardware stack, has already been um, set up with the host of the plates and the wine in the cup. And all I do now, and I bless the water. Press the water so that together with this wine, it may be to us the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Um, anything that's open on here, I mean, I will consume. This, these are the hosts for you. You know, now we're going to see them one kind. Um, they are sealed, not been touched by human hands. Um, we had some left over last week, we've got the reserve sacrament, that also has not been touched, it's been put into there and uh, locked away through the week, so we will be using, using both. And I will not wash my hands. Although this is a 20 second hygienic cleansing, um, we still use the ritual cleansing that cleanses my heart and my mind. That's We give thanks for the financial offering and for the gifts on the table of bread and wine. For yours, Lord, is the greatness, the power, the splendor, and the majesty. For everything in heaven and on earth is yours. All things come from you and of your own to you. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. From sunrise to sunset, this day is holy, for Christ has risen from the tomb and scattered the darkness of death with light that will not fade. This day the risen Lord walks with all your gathered people, unfolds for us your word, and makes himself known in the breaking of bread. And though the night will overtake this day, you summon us to live in endless light, the never-ceasing sight of the Lord. And so with wise of angels and all the heavenly hosts, we proclaim your glory and join our ending hymn of praise. Holy, 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 Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the heart, blessed is she who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the heart. We praise and bless you, loving Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord. And as we obey his command, send your Holy Spirit. 
that broken bread and wine outpoured may be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. On the night before he died, he had supper with his friends, and taking bread, he prayed to you. He broke the bread and gave it to them, saying, Hey, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was ended, he took the cup of wine. Again he praised you, gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you. Do this in remembrance of me. So far, we remember all that Jesus did. In him we plead with confidence his sacrifice, made once for all upon the cross. Bringing before you the bread of life and the cup of salvation, we proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ is the Son. Christ is the truth. Christ will come again. Lord of all, help us work together for that day when your kingdom comes, and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Look with favour upon your people. Gather us in your loving arms and bring us to St. Peter, St. John, St. Matthew, the Blessed Virgin Mary, and all the saints to feast at your table in heaven. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, O lovely Father, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And so let's pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trust us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in the one bread. Man of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Man of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Man of God, you take away the sin of the world, grant us peace. My brothers and sisters in Christ, these are the gifts of God, God's holy. For God's holy people. Jesus Christ is holy. Jesus Christ is Lord. To the glory of God the Father.
this is the blood of Christ, which is shed for us all. What Jenny has just read is known as this, what is known as spiritual communion. And we, we say that prayer for people who are online, and we have been doing so all the way through the pandemic lockdown, where we were not able to gather together. We recognize that there are still some people who, who, who cannot join us. Let us pray. God of our pilgrimage, you have willed that the gates of mercy should stand open to those who trust in you. Look upon us with your favour, that we who follow the path of your will may never wander from the way of life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. Let us stand for us. The peace of God Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of His Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you now and remain with you always. Amen. So let us go in peace.